Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm the co-host, Spirit, aka Papa Fulu. We are people who like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We realize that we all like similar titles and we could talk about them for hours. So here we are in Podcasts Across Worlds to talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. All right, so in this episode, we are going to talk about Devil's Line. Spirit actually suggested this for me because he knew I would like it. And it's a category we haven't touched on yet. Well, it's a combo of categories. You've got romance, horror, and slice of life. Which sounds like it wouldn't really work, but when it comes to Devil's Line, I thought it did quite well. When I saw the trailer... I thought it was going to be very romance with a lot of angst in it. Because from the trailer, I just saw, okay, we got two different species. One that's like a devil with vampire-like features. And the other one is a human. Which shouldn't work out. Twilight, the anime. (laughs) Yeah, it totally made me think of Twilight. And I was thinking, is this going to be like Twilight? And it kind of was, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain why. It, it it's Twilight, but in a good way. It's better than Twilight. So it wasn't totally like Twilight. There was only some things that made me think of Twilight. Only some things, but it's it's not a Twilight. It's definitely not one. But there is there are scenes that made me think of Twilight. And I'll get to it when we get to those scenes. I'm going to say the whole vampire romance and everything like that. And if you call the characters fucking Bella and Ed- Edward, in the first episode, yes. I still don't think it was a Twilight. It's, it's a little Twilighty. But at least this vampire doesn't sparkle. Well, how about you explain why you think it's like Twilight? No, no I mean, the whole Twilight thing where you have misunderstood female and brooding vampire male. And the sort of like, unrequainted love, will they, won't they, sort of thing. It's got that Twilight vibe. Mm. But, unlike Twilight, mm. I actually like Devil's Line. Yeah, I'm going to explain why I don't think it's like Twilight, because I've read multiple human vampire romance stories. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> so I have watched Twilight. <laughs> so okay, so we can say that Spirit thinks it's like Twilight because that's the only vampire human romance he's ever seen or read. Uh, well, no, I'm not saying it is like Twilight. I'm saying it's got a similar premise. Well, the opening's got a similar premise to Twilight. So I say it's not like Twilight because so with Twilight we have this girl. Bella, who's fascinated with this mysterious boy who turns out to be a vampire and she's just so intrigued with them and she's attracted to him. Are you and saying then, that's not describing you guys who got a new kid? Wait, 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 wait. Because the thing that makes Devil's Lane not like Twilight is Yuki. So we got Edward, who's more attracted to Bella because of her scent, her blood. And it's like, does he truly like her for who she is? Or does he like her because he can't read her mind and he's attracted to her blood? There's that little, there's that part that you're not too sure if he really, really likes her. Mm. Where there's Yuki. He's a devil with vampire-like features. He does react to her blood, but he's like, he doesn't have that instant attraction to her. Well, he does kiss her in the first episode because she's got a nosebleed. No. He kissed her because she had a cut on her mouth. Oh, yeah, it's cut on her mouth. I thought it was a nosebleed. No, no, no. That's why they had a tongue kiss. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and this is the quote sorry about that with the tongue and everything 
That's what you should tell us here. I like wrote down that quote. I was like, <laughs> You actually wrote down quotes from it. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to write this down. <laughs> this I, is. I, I, episode one or two? <laughs> I was like, Damn. It's, it's episode one because it's literally just after her friend tries to eat her. So let's describe the setting. So we're in this we're in Japan. We're in Japan. It's Earth. And there are these there's a new species. There's a new humanoid species and they're called devils. And they have vampire like features. They ah uh, they like the scent of blood. They like the look of blood and once they have a taste of it, they get addicted to it to the point where they lose humanity. They become more animalistic. And they transform. Their eyes change. It turns red with like uh, yellow irises. Their teeth like grow out. They look more like demons because they're hmm. like they have like fangs coming over their mouth, like from the top and the bottom of their teeth, where it kind of looks like they're like onis. Yeah, it's but, kind of got like the only samurai mask type thing. Yeah, but they have this like thirst for blood. Like they like <laughs> see it, they smell it, and they're like, "What is this? I need this!" Like they just have that instinct to eat it, drink it, whatever you want to do by consuming <clears throat> it. So we got this main male character, Yuki Anzai. He's a half devil. He's half. And if anyone wants to know what Yuki looks like without looking at the anime, look up Dante from the DMC game. <laughs> looks exactly like him. So you have Yuki. He works with the police force. And if you're wondering, devils aren't known to the public. It's actually a, a, a secret. With the governments all over the world. Like, the government knows about them, but they're not disclosing it. And then we got this other character named Tsukasa. Wait, Tsukasa? Tsukasa. 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 So we have Tsukasa. Okay, I watched the dub and it sounds like they're saying Skaska. I'm like, Skaska? Yeah. What is that? Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> it's one of the ones where I do prefer the dubbed over the sub. <laughs> so there's Sukasa, and let's describe her personality. She is a girl who, who's who's never been in love before. And she's just going along with life, enjoying friendship, enjoying her hobbies. Are you describing Sukasa or Bella? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, I did not disagree that Sukasa was like Bella. I think Sukasa <laughs> is like Bella. Yeah, Sukasa is more like Bella than Yuki is like Edward. And I'm going to explain later on why. <laughs> so, Sukasa. Is it Sukasa? Sukasa. Okay, yeah, it is. Oh, so Sukasa. Tyra. Tyra? Tara? I can't remember how you pronounce her other name. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the first episode, the guy who likes her, her friend who likes her, uh, she rejects him because she's like, oh, I don't feel like that with you. It turns out he's a devil. And he's been attacking other women and raping them because he's trying to suppress that feeling so he doesn't attack Sukasa. And if you're wondering why he was raping them too, it's because when they do uh, consume the blood, it also activates their sexual urges too. It's like, it's a combination. <laughs> There's no one or the other. It comes together. <laughs> I said that weird. Whatever. It was the fact that you were talking about sexual design then comes together. It made yeah. me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that sounded weird. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that was happening. And Yuki uh, apprehends him. 
And Yuki thought that Sukasa and that guy were together. And he kind of feels guilty. So he watches over her. And this is where I started making notes. So after he apprehends Sukasa's friend, he takes her home because uh, she tripped. She hurt her foot, her ankle. He carries her home and he drops her off. And then she has like a cut by her mouth from when she fell. And he's like, oh my gosh, blood. And for the first time, he lost control. And he goes after her blood. And in order to get to her blood, he had to like shove his mouth into her mouth and lick the blood. And that was like Tsukasa's first kiss. Oh my gosh, she's like 20 in her 20s. And that was her first kiss. So on this part, I'm thinking, okay, is this like a impression? Like, is this an imprint kind of thing? Because that was her first kiss. Is that why she started being attracted to him? I was very skeptical of her. Because <laughs> she was reminding me of Bella from Twilight. So the notes I had was like, okay, so Kasa hasn't been in love before. Her attraction to Anzai could have been like an imprint sort of thing because of that kiss, her first kiss. Because of that. And there are funny scenes in this anime. Mm-hmm. Like, Part where she's thinking about Yuki, Yuki Anzai, and then she goes to look out the window, she pulls the curtain, and Yuki's like right there. <laughs> like total stalker <laughs> and staring at her. And I was like, girl. <laughs> You're talking about that. total stalker. She wakes up to him smelling her. Oh my gosh, I wrote that down too. I took note of that too. She was fine with it. She was totally fine with it. <laughs> like this is like I say this is probably one of my favorite romance anime just because of how stupid it can be at certain moments and it's just trick like oh this is normal bruh bruh I was like, <laughs> so suspicious of her because well not suspicious of her but I was like okay Dubious. is she going to be like a Bella where <laughs> on the second book where in the twilight story Edward she keeps trying to kill herself to be weird yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. she puts herself in danger so she could see him so she could see a delusion of edward okay so on episode two where anzai was on her balcony you know they're talking story and then yuki anzai gets called to work you're like okay there's like a devil on the loose we need you so yuki anzai leaves and then Tsukasa sees his wallet and she's like oh my gosh he left his wallet and i'm like oh no is this a cliche thing where like she goes after him and yes she goes after him and so i'm like thinking okay are they doing this on purpose so she can put herself in danger so she can be rescued by yuki again Fortunately, no, that didn't happen. No, it did not happen. What happened was it gave her an opportunity to hear what's it, what it's like to be in a relationship with the devil. Mm. So what happens is the devil that Yuki had to apprehend was actually someone he knew. And it was a girl. It was a woman. And the situation was she unintentionally killed her partner her husband Mm -hmm. and what happened was they knew what type of relationship they're in because there's like regulations going on with like devil and human partners and her partner's a human and what happened was he cut his finger there was blood and he told her lick it and then Remember when I said that whenever devils see and smell blood, they get crazy? Like, they can't help it? So that's what happened to her. And through that frenzy, she killed her partner. 
And so from her point of view, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm a monster. This is never going to happen. Like, I try to keep him safe. I try to suppress my urges. I try to keep my devil side under control. But then Yuki comes along. He says, well, he shouldn't have showed you that blood in the first place. That was inconsiderate of him. And I was like, huh, that is true. Mm. If her partner knew that she was a devil, he shouldn't have shown her that blood. But then Yuki also counters that by saying, did you explain him how dangerous it would be if you saw blood, if you went out of control? But she, And she doesn't say anything, but that does mean that she didn't really explain it. And so he goes on saying, like, you guys should have communi- communicated better on the dangers of being in a relationship together. So you're both in the wrong. He was being inconsiderate. You weren't being truthful about things. So it's like, okay, this is what a relationship between a human and devil is like. And I believe during that scene as well, it's also stated that humans and devils can get together with permission from this organization, but they are not allowed to have sexual relations. Correct. So it's a case of they can be happy as long as it's a strictly emotional type of relationship and not a physical one. Devils and humans can be together, but it has to be with this organization's knowledge. I think there is that regulation because of the whole sexual urge and yeah. blood sucking. And they wonder what would happen if it did happen, which happens in a later episode. <laughs> Say that episode has one of the most awkward scenes ever in it. <laughs> So in, uh, I believe this is also episode two, where Tsukasa gets attacked by her professor. So this is another thing that made her, that made me think that she was like Bella. Always in danger. Yes. Yes. It's like she has no danger. Like, what's it called? Awareness? Yeah. So, Takasa goes to her professor. You know, Yuki and her, they made plans to meet up after her class. But before that, Tsukasa goes to her professor to return a book. And the professor's like, oh, it's you. And he aggressively pulls her into his office. Okay, that's warning one. Warning one, okay? Then warning two. The professor forces her to grab another book to borrow. Like she's like, "Oh no, no, no! I, it's okay. I don't want to borrow this. I don't want to like bother you." He's like, "No, no, no, no! Take it, take it!" And so he forces her to take the book, and as a result, he grabs her hands and then pulls her in and forces a tongue kiss on her. I'm like wondering, is the author purposely putting Sukasa? into situations <laughs> <laughs> it's not they're purposely doing this like you would think that after the guy that she thought of as a friend who turned out to be a devil you would think like she's like kind of scared of guys by now so somehow Sukasa, she's able to like think not think I think she purposely did this, but like she like grabbed a cup and like she broke it and her hands end up being bloody. And the professor, he's already like manhandle her. Like her clothes are in like all messed up. Her bra is like up, you know. It's like, oh my goodness, this girl, she's like, she almost got raped. But anyways, anyways, anyways. So she like breaks some cup. And then she cuts her hand. Blood is spilling out. And I'm thinking, okay, did she do that on purpose? Because she knows that Yuki is going to like smell it, smell her blood. I don't think it's on purpose. I think she originally was going to grab the cup and use it like as a weapon. But she chickened out and didn't do that. <clears throat> I yeah, I don't... Why. <laughs> <laughs> because Yuki's probably there smelling her clothes. <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, I, I think it is a case of wanting to use it as a weapon, but it's a case of what a lot of people say. In those situations, people can say what they would do, but you don't really know until you're in that situation yourself. So she's like trying to hit him with this cup and everything like that, but the situation happens where she ends up slitting a hand open and there's blood. So it's a case of she, she was planning something, but due to said circumstance, it didn't go how she planned. So I think my theory was right because Anzai did pop up. I keep calling him Anzai. Yuki Anzai. Yeah, that Yuki Anzai. Yuki, Yuki pops up. He breaks a window. He saves her. I think I think he did smell her blood. <laughs> I, I think he did because he was. He Anzai is very very stalkerish. <laughs> I think he did, <laughs> and um, he saves her. But the thing is, with the combination of smelling her blood and seeing her, uh, disheveled, disheveled clothes and um her breast showing. There is like that combination of like sexual urge and consume the blood urge. So he's like, <laughs> and the uh, bitch touch my woman urge. <laughs> you need to watch Devil's Line. It's really good. <laughs> so um, you know he saves her. He like beats up the professor. He tells he tells uh Sukasa, okay, call the cops. Tell them what happened. Uh, and to control himself, he like ran away. And this is where they show how strong the combination between the consumption of the blood and the sexual urge is. <laughs> I was I was surprised by this. They they show a scene where it, like there is blood on him, and he he's like in a secluded area and he's licking the blood and because of that sexual urge he relieves himself <laughs> and it's like whoa whoa like this is like rated M for mature <laughs> well. and you know like all these like etchy kind of stuff they're very subtle it's not like blatant it's kind of yeah. like you, you kind of see like bits of it, not the whole thing, but you know what's going on, <laughs> which I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate that. It, it, it's subtle in its etchiness. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a tasteful etchy, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, tasteful nudes. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it, but I. I know I've uh, I know some people who've watched it and they've been like that's been their point where they're like, What the fuck am I watching and they quit? But I do see that as an important scene in the series. Cause it shows like you say, it shows how strong that urge is and he needed to get away. And it also leads that for question is if Yuki didn't leave Sakasa at that moment. What would have happened if he wasn't able to control himself? I would say, but it is one of those scenes. In the, but if you just happen to like see that moment in a scene and everything like that, like on certain websites, you'd think this is a hentai <laughs> when you see just that scene out of context. But overall, it does make sense of it, the psychology of the devils. And the devils can't help it. It's just like an instinct, an urge. It's. It's there. They can't help it. It's just part of their genetic makeup. Okay, so with that whole combination of the blood consumption and the sexual urge, it's sort of like an instinct that to make them reproduce. That's where I was trying to go with. Mm. But the well, thing is, their their population is low. They're like what one thousand in in all of Tokyo. Something around that number, yeah. And in the population of Japan, it was like 0.1%. So their population is low, but they have that urge to have sex. Okay. It's like, huh, you think there's more of you guys. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Hey, fuck like rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> so in the same episode, 
where Sukasa gets attacked by her professor. This is where you would really think she's afraid of men. Like, you would think she's, like, deathly afraid of them. But, but, you know, Tsukasa's, like, waiting for Yuki Anzai. She's like, where is he? I wonder if he's okay. You know, she's, like, thinking about him, waiting for him to pop up at her window. And... He doesn't pop up at her window. What happens is while she's sleeping, he pops up at her place. He goes in like she left her window open for him. And to her sleeping form, he sniffs her. He's like... <laughs> he wakes up to that. And he's like, sorry for waking you. And she's like, oh, it's okay. I'm like, hello? He just went into your place while you're sleeping. Like, girl. That's where I was thinking she was like, Bella, okay? <laughs> I think there is actually a scene in the show, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, where he opens the balcony door when she's in there by herself and's like, you should really shut that. <laughs> just walks in. She should lock it. Oh, yeah. She should lock it while opening it and letting himself in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, she purposely left that window unlocked for him. She purposely did that. So, yeah, you know, um, that's where I was like thinking, yeah, she's totally like a Bella. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but I do I, I, I was like this story is actually really good. This is like getting quite exciting. <laughs> let's see how let's how let's see if their development goes. And you know, the story actually goes beyond that romance. Like there it ends up like there's like a conspiracy going on. Like mm. the government is doing experiments on the devils and they're making hybrids and it's like sort of like they don't really say it but to for me i think about it and i'm thinking i'm like think of like con conspiracy theories like okay are they trying to make like devil soldiers devil soldiers that don't go out of control and try to drink blood like there's that going on that, i was thinking similar because i know during a certain scene uh, later on where he, a lot of people die and what i'm thinking up until that point where you start finding out more stuff is if they're trying to make you know, like sleeper agents where you could have a devil in the middle of a city then all of a sudden something triggers and that's them gone like having them is literally ticking time bombs there's like so many aspects in this anime about devils because like i said before devils aren't well known uh to the average person like the government is keeping it all hush hush but the devils have to live on and they're trying to just, like hide their identities and it's really hard for them because they also have to suppress their urge to drink blood and they have to live their everyday life like some of them actually mutilate themselves to suppress the urge just so they can live on with society which is kind of heartbreaking they they want to be accepted and they don't want to be monsters and in order to do that they hurt themselves while there's others like yuki who has access to like these drugs that helps him calm himself they're very similar to the serum from the Blade movies. The the police force, when they apprehend devils that run loose, that become like serial killers, they have tranquilizers to put them down. But for the non-lethal devil, they have like these serums to calm them, but it kind of makes them invalid for like 10 minutes. Talking about this, leads to we encounter a character named Lee 
who is also a half devil, like Yuki. He was very weird. I like Lee. I liked him. <laughs> I thought he was going to be a bad guy. <laughs> like he was totally giving evil person vibes because when you first see him, he's like kind of like skulking about, like just observing. <laughs> and there's like a scene where Yuki is chasing after this human who's killing devils. And Yuki ends up being shot a lot to the point where he's dying. And Lee comes along and with a flask, he like pours blood into Yuki's mouth. He's like, bottoms up so you can heal. But then because Yuki doesn't drink blood, his tolerance to that much blood was bad. Like he went berserk. And Lee was like super calm about it. He's like, oh. I guess he has a low tolerance. Well, I guess I should help out and calm him down. <laughs> it's like he's so calm about this. He's like treating things like all nonchalant, like la di da di da. Oh, uh, someone's dying. Let me help. And Lee can kick ass. He can. <clears throat> the reason why I brought up Lee is because instead of not drinking blood and trying to suppress his urge, he actually embraces consuming yeah. blood and he builds a tolerance. So during and he says like he has donors. And this made me think of the story or HBO TV show True Blood. I've never seen True Blood. So True Blood uh is about how fantasy creatures reveal their existence and become mainstream. So let's call them fey folk, the fey folk, vampires, werewolves, fairies, anything that's like fantastical, supernatural, anything supernatural. There you go, supernatural. They exist. It's just that they hide themselves because the human world aren't ready for it. They're not ready. So it got to a point where werewolves and vampires, they're like, okay, the human population is ready to know our existence. So I think vampires are first. And it became so mainstream where there's clubs where humans purposely go there so they can get their blood sucked because they get like a high, they get high off of it, that whole thrill. And so there's people who actually donate their blood to these vampires and there's blood banks that sell it to vampires. That's how mainstream it was becoming. So Lee was getting blood from a donor. So that made me think of true blood. I'm like, okay, so maybe later on in the story, devils will be revealed to the population and there's going to be clubs like that where humans are going to go there so they can get their blood sucked by devils. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> oh, that, that definitely does sound like some weird ass fetish. Yes. In True Blood, they were saying it is one. <laughs> like, uh, it got to a point where, like, there's like some humans who are addicted to it and they're willing to be slaves. But yeah, anyways, 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 that wasn't that didn't even happen in Devil's Line, but I totally think it could happen. It would have help out the devils and human relationships because as you find out through like Lee, microdosing on blood makes it so he doesn't have this urge. But when it comes to Yuki and all how certain things you can see like the person who shot Yuki also attacks him while he's in Tsukasa's apartment. And he thinks she dies when she gets shot at. And how she walks away with that with just a scratch on her face is kind of a miracle. But what do you mean? Just got, she got shot in the head and walked away with a scar. She didn't get shot in the head. She's got a scar on her face. Oh, 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 I thought you said she got shot in the head and 
the bullet grazed her face. Yeah, the bullet grazed her face, and she's got a scar. Oh yeah. And I was saying the, no. the fact that she managed to walk away with just a scar on her face after being shot in the head. But Yuki just thinks she's dead and just goes on a rampage trying to go after the sniper who wants to kill all devils, no questions asked. And I think that's Nanako. You're talking about the human that shot... Uh, shot, uh, shot Yuki and yeah. also shot at Tsukasa. She, uh, she had a code. But later on, they reveal her name. But she had a code name. Oh, zero seven. Was, yeah, there you go. There you go. No, oh yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah, zero seven, not nine. Because Nana. Yeah, zero seven. Another Nana. One with anime with Nana that you should watch. Magical Girl Side. Check out the episode. <laughs> Yuki is very protective and very territorial when it comes to Sakasa. He is, and I, I don't know why. That one, I'm not too sure. I don't want to say it's just because her blood. Because, ah. I want to say, like, he subconsciously is attracted to her. Because later on in the series, he meets this doctor who tries to help him control his devil side because I thought this was this was really interesting. So the doctor pointed out to Yuki that Yuki isn't controlling his devil instincts. He's trying to suppress it. And controlling is actually mastering it. So I thought that was really interesting. And so the doctor was saying, okay, we need to understand why your devil urge comes out, why you uh, transform. They call it transforming when, they, when their devil features take, take over. And so the doctor actually said that they would have to do experiments with Yuki and Tsukasa doing the hanky-panky. <laughs> and uh, he's like, what he's like you don't have to go all the way but we need to know what's triggering your transformation <laughs> because the doctor knew it wasn't it wasn't Sukasa's blood it had to be something about Sukasa, like that attraction like there's something that causes yuki to transform so they're like, okay, once we understand what's making you transform, we can work with it. Uh, and it seems like the thought of Yuki makes him transform. Like the thought of protecting her makes him transform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this part was very interesting. Like, I... You see, you see what happened was... Oh gosh, like I don't want to like say anything because it spoils it. <laughs> uh, something happens and then it doesn't happen because certain things and then he decides he needs to step away from the situation. No, that's not what happened. They got interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say, but he got interrupted and he thinks I'm going to have to finish this myself. <laughs> she leaves the room. Yeah, they get interrupted because um remember when I said like they had to figure out what was triggering the transformation? They're actually being monitored by the, the doctors. <laughs> yeah. It's all and clinical, the, it's all it's all safe. <laughs> yeah. And so um this scene does show like the whole attraction between Yuki and Tsukasa, that's, I would say, organic. It is a, it is a organic attraction to each other, which I liked. I like seeing this because Tsukasa is kind of, kind of extreme in my opinion. So when she learned that Yuki could build a tolerance to blood by Yuki drinking blood like every day, 
She tells Yuki that he can drink her blood every day. And it's like, she sounds like she's trying to be useful to him and also tie him down by using her blood. Like, that's what it sounded like. I don't think it's necessarily the tied down thing. I think well, knowing what he does and everything like that, proving that she could be some benefit to him. But then again, well, when she's just as obsessed with him as he is with her. I would like to defend Yuki because of his devil instincts, <laughs> his devil urges. <laughs> <laughs> He's not thinking logically there. You know, He's, He's thinking with his devil brain. Right. While Sakasta, you know, she can... <laughs> she has a choice, okay? <laughs> and to make him only drink her blood and make him dependent on her blood. This is why I said it sounds like she's trying to tie him down. <laughs> That's why. Uh, I saw it as a if you have to drink blood, why not me? <laughs> not a case of if you liked it, you should have put your fangs in it. You've been waiting to say that, huh? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, I I didn't because you can see that both clearly have physical as well as emotional attraction to each other. Yeah, you could see that. Like Especially when genuine. they get interrupted and he has to <laughs> I still think that that scene didn't need to happen. It didn't need to go on that long. But it's a case of and he'll go, even go through things to stop himself, like when a certain, uh, I think it happens before this, where there's the vampire things attacking the city where people are getting killed. In, is it like the Shinjuku area? Oh, so what happened was in, a, in Shinjuku area, there's a lot of people. And so remember when we said like there's like conspiracies going on? So there's these anti devil, there was an anti devil group. And they slashed a person in this crowded area and all the devils were triggered. Mm. And this was done on a live broadcast too. And it, it was so bad that even devils out watching the live broadcast, just by seeing the blood, they're triggered and they transformed. Mm. And it made it seem like there was a bigger devil presence than there actually was. Right. So it's really oh this this is also heartbreaking because all these devils that were trying to be part of society were forced to transform all because they saw the sight of blood. So all these devils that were trying to, you know, just you know, survive in society, you know, keeping their secret devil life were Forcefully exposed by this anti devil group. And you know, they were doing fine. They were doing okay until this slasher comes along, slices up this poor girl, making her blood splatter about. And just because of the sight, the smell, they transformed. They were exposed. And it was like, that was like, it was unfair. It was so unfair. And this is where like the story gets more complicated. It gets deeper than the romance that we've talked majority of this podcast episode. Like I said before, there's like a conspiracy going on with the government. Like there is like a scientific facility that's pretty much making experiments on these devils and I have a theory they're trying to make devil soldiers 
to be used. I don't know why, but they are. And there's like this anti-devil group, and I'm like, where is this going? Because they, they, yeah, a lot's going on, and there's a lot of unanswered questions at the end of the season. It is one of those situations when it comes to stuff like that, when you see the devils getting outed when the news broadcaster gets killed. It's a case of who is really the bad guy. And another anime that's very similar, it's a horror anime, is Shiki, which has a very similar situation. It's a case of you are led to believe that these monsters are the real bad guys and everything like that. But then there's a turning point, and it's kind of like, who is actually the bad guy? Is it the humans, or is it the vampires? And it's the same with Devil's Line. Like, you have people like Yuki. There's also... What's her name? Julia. Uh, yeah, Julia. And you have all these devils and everything like that are working to not only stop the rogue devils, who are actively killing people just because their feeling of, like... Drinking blood and raping because that is the strongest urge in them, and some would be like, "Fuck it, if I I want to feel good, so this is all I'm gonna do." They want to stop that. They want to prove that yes, there are good devils out there. There are there are bad people on both sides, but they're also good people. But the anti devil group are like, "No, you're not human. You're not one of us," and it is one of those very us or them moments. And why I kind of... Like I say, Devil's Line's kind of one of my favourite romance anime. I don't really care for the romance in it. It's very... Twilighty. In that... Why are you saying that? Because you only know Twilight. I, <laughs> that is not true. And also kind of. But... <laughs> it, it, no, I'm saying Twilight because it's very. If you take away the every other aspect of it, it's very like young adult romance sort of thing. If you just had the aspect of Yuki and Sukasa, but what I like about Devil's Line is everything that's going on behind the scenes, like not happening with the main characters, but like again, political intrigue. What is the government doing? Like Lewis said, the soldiers, I think they're trying to make sleeper agents where they can just put them in a country, then all of a sudden flip a switch, they're going to attack. Or be like, oh, look, devils are attacking. We need to rise up against them, like use them as scapegoats. Like, oh, this is a situation. It was the devils. Yeah, there is stuff going on like that. And I also have like a theory that there there is a devil group where... They're trying to rise above and take over. But oh, yeah, there is. They're, they're doing it like small steps, like step by step. Mm. It, it, that is, case is kind of like uh, if you've seen Tokyo Ghoul, the clowns in them, where it, it, it takes a while for them to actually rise up in the final season. But yeah, Devil's Line is a a mediocre romance anime. But if when you add everything else to it, like the horror aspects, the the thriller, everything into it, it I'd say it makes an above average show. Yeah, like um, at the end of the season, I was satisfied with the romance part. I was like, okay, we're good. Great. Now I want to know all the <laughs> conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. I was exactly the same. I'm kind of like, okay, cool. That's happening. But what is going on? What's with this facility? You you get given enough answers that makes you just want m more answers. Right. Right. And I'm like thinking, okay, when season two? And then I look. When this series was published, I'm like, 2018. Okay. When are we getting se season two? Come on, season two. Bring it. I don't I do not believe there's gonna be season two. 
Neither do I. I don't think Devil's Line was that popular. No, it wasn't. Because people thought it was a Twilight style romance. Oh, it came out at a bad time. Mm. A lot of good shows came out around the same time, and I believe what Devil's Line is clusters is a sign and romance horror. You know what? I think it was also the trailer. The trailer made it seem like it was all about that romance, but it wasn't. Yeah, there's a lot more behind it. Devil's Line is... I'd say it's a sleeper. It's <laughs> one... <laughs> it's one of those that goes under the radar. Like, if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. But if the most of the people who... I have spoken to who I've actually managed to sit through it all and not get turned off by the whole happy little accident Yuki kind of has. Uh, it's a case of they've enjoyed it and it's the same thing. They don't really care much for the romance, but it's everything that happens in the background. It's like, I'm like, okay, what's this? What's this? What's happening? Because... A lot of the stuff that's not at the forefront is the stuff that you want to know about, and I think it's quite clever how the whole series goes out. Like, yeah, you have these two main characters, but it's the broader world around them. Like, I, I want to know more about the Devil Agency. I want to know more about the facility. I want to know more about the anti-devil group. I want to have a, about the Devil Supremacist group. So what we're saying for season two, I don't give a fuck about Yuki and Sakasa giving me the wider world. <laughs> because as we said before, devils are all over the world. It's not just in the Japan, because there is a character named Julia where she's half American and half Russian. So, And she's a full devil. So, yeah. Kinda she's kind of like Yuki's handler. Kinda. She kind of is. But there is a manga. I haven't read it, and I don't know how far it went. I'm looking it up now. <laughs> there is the manga, so if I want to know more, I can just read it. Just gotta find it. Other than that, I saw Devil Line on Hulu. It's available on Hulu in America. And all if you also want to watch it, I believe it's available on... Oh, what is it? that? They have exclusive rights to the dub. D-Live? Yeah, D-Live. I believe they have the exclusive rights to the dub. And now it is time for the paw question. Every episode, we ask viewers a question, and you guys can answer either in the comments, if the platform allows it, or in the Discord. There is a link in the description for the Discord, and in the Discord, there is a thread called Paul Question, with the question that we ask in the episode, and viewers can either answer in anime or manga, whichever relates to your answer. So the Paul question for this episode is, what is a title that reminded you of a mainstream movie or book? For example, Devil Line reminded Spirit and I of Twilight, which is a book and a movie. Spirit saw the movie. I read the book and saw the movie. But anyways, what is a title from either an anime or a manga that reminds you of a book or a movie that's been mainstream? I'm Lihua Superfina, host of Podcasts Across Worlds. You can find me on all social media platforms at Lehua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Hi, I'm Spirit Shop, co-host of Podcast Across Worlds and also content creator, streamer on the channel you'll find in the description. And one of the upcoming shows is Tinfoil Talks, where we deep dive into bullshit in video gaming. We take a topic and we find out how it got there, why it's there, come up with some excuse until we believe it ourselves. 
and then put it out into the stratosphere. And that concludes our episode of Podcasts Across Worlds. Thank you all for tuning in. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. We'll see you on the next episode. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump. <laughs>